All right. Yeah, I think we got it now. In the room. Because he doesn't need Great. to be offline. There you are. Awesome. All right. All right. And uh, it should say that I made you co host. And it says it on my screen, so you should be all set. Awesome. All right. This time I will not click the wrong button. Oh, you just hit the wrong button when you're leaving? Yeah, I hit the wrong one. Instead of uh, leave meeting, I hit end meeting for all. So oh, uh, I'm, yeah, I'll be careful this time. <laughs> they put those buttons so close together. I, don't know I know. I know. <laughs> Especially on a phone. <laughs> yeah, 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 I imagine. Right. <laughs> all right. I'll talk to you guys later. Have a good night. Right, Steve, see you. All right. Bye. Bye. Restart the recording. I started, I started the recording, so this will be recorded. Oh, okay. um, we have to for state laws. Oh. Open meetings law. So anytime there's a group of us, um, it's an open meeting, open meetings law. So we if we if we don't have the public with us, then we have to record it. Okay. Right. So if we were in Village Hall, then basically the invitation goes out and then anybody from the public can be part of um, their discussion. So um, that's a New York state law we have to abide by. So, so the last meeting was recorded, but it's an internal because it was more of a, a startup is what we had decided um, based on some of our other members. So um, the rest of it is, th this meeting will be uh, published on the website going forward. Okay. All right. Hi, oh, Nick, I should have put some, I should have put some time in the agenda to welcome Nick. Oh. <laughs> Hi guys, how are you? Hi Nick. How are you? Good to meet you guys. Yeah. I think you could probably see everybody's name in their little square. Yes, I guess. Maybe we add, maybe we can skip going around and introducing. Yeah, ourselves. no, I can see I can see your names. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good to meet you guys. You too. Good Thank you for being part of it. Thanks to Joanna for inviting me. I can't see you though on my We can't. Let me see. Can't see, see me? Now, only on the big screen, but not at the top of the floor. That's okay. I can hear you is the main thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, and um, Unina can't make it uh, this evening. I, I just pulled up the agenda. Um, yeah. We want to just um, get started. Um, the one thing I firstly wanted to talk about was the mission statement. Um, was everybody, I have the old one there and the new one there, was everybody okay with the changes? Because if so, I was going to supply it to Keaton and he could get it um, changed on the website. Yeah, I, I didn't have any problems, but I'll leave you guys to really vote. I mean, my role really is to, <clears throat> as liaison, is to kind of let you guys do your thing and you ask me what you need. That doesn't mean I can't participate, but um, that's why I say I don't want to drive the direction of this. Um, I'm more of a facilitator, if you will. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, so I'm, I like it. I don't see anything wrong with it from my perspective. I actually like the addition. So, so I'll leave it to the other members to say yay or nay, and they're good with it, then you go with it. Mm -hmm. I like it. Yeah. I liked it. Okay. Okay, okay good. And, and so what is not on the agenda, we can discuss next. Um, Joanna, was your uh, vision uh, statement that um, it, it was so, in, so eloquently and intelligently written. I, you know, my, one of my um, feedback was, let's make it a little more like palatable for the, the layman. Like I was having to kind of, you know, every couple of phrases stop and make sure I was understanding it like maybe making it, um, and then Yonina had a couple of um, suggestions that she emailed. Mm -hmm. um, let me make sure. I think she wanted to include um, something about systemic racism. I'm trying to find that email now. I think that just came today. I was looking at that and then I closed out my yeah. email. Um, yes, I think she mentioned the fact that it would be important to implement, you know, under the, the domain of systemic 
racism, which is a very broad range, in my opinion. Um, yeah, it looks, looks like her phrase, she wanted a phrase somewhere, we will be a committee of neighbors attempting in our village to address systemic racism and mm -hmm. educate, um, you know, and then she's got the ellipsis mm -hmm. there as it continue on. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna open yours up now. Okay. So do you want to kind of, um, re you know, read, you know, read it to us and, and we'll follow along and, um, you know, if anybody has anything to say about the different, you know, tenants she's kind of set up there, we could maybe approach the discussion that way. That's fine with me. Again, you know, like I, I think I put in the email, I'm going to try to get the actual document up right now. And I apologize. I'm just coming in from my business and just still flying around. I should have had that printed up so that I, have, I would have it in front of me, but I'm going to get it out. What I basically did was just put together an outline, you know, um, based on our last discussion. And from there, form the outline and just put it out there just for uh, your reflections and, and, you know, anything that you might want to add or, you know, or subtract, um, just, you know, an outline based on, you know, our last conversation. Um, I can go ahead though. So, so this would be kind of a deeper dive in than the mission statement, the mission statement you see on the website. And then this vision is, is something that would be like, um, is it available to just the, the general public? Is it just kind of our our vision that we, you know, mm -hmm. keep amongst committee members or I wasn't quite sure how it was used? Well, yes, definitely. It's our vision, you know, our vision to, to carry out the mission, um, mm -hmm. you know, as leaders. Um, I, I can go ahead and outline, um, okay. you know, basically I, I, you know, when I was, uh, gathering the data and just looking at, you know, the notes that I took previous, um, pardon me for looking down because I'm actually looking on my phone here at the document. You know, I, I was just thinking that, you know, collectively our vision would be like a team, you know, although, you know, uh, the village of Williamsville, I don't know if we would so much as, um, are we a group or are we a team? I, I would imagine we're a team in a group. I'm not quite sure myself on, you know, are, are we a team or are we a group? Or I'm inclined to believe that, you know, we're, we're part of the team um, and, and, and being part of the team in, in, in the domain of diversity that we would, you know, the whole idea is to bring the community together in oneness and unity and you know, have a healthy, that it will be a healthy community, healthy place to live, healthiness. And that, you know, you mentioned, or someone mentioned the ability to, to implement uh, training and development, which is fine, but we have to make sure in that, that we really examine all instructional models to make sure that they're in alignment, not only with the mission and the vision, but also, that people or residents, I should say, would be able to walk away with the right training and development, you know, or that we talked about, that it would be right. So it's very important for us to really examine, you know, the ways we're going to implement if we decide to go in that way. Very, very important. Yeah. I think you said you did training like that in the past for companies. Well, yeah, I'm my own consultant. I, yes, I'm a corporate yeah. trainer yeah. and consultant. I do both. Yeah. I'm, I'm able to consult and train. And, and you know, and I have a lot of, uh, you know, as you know already, I have a lot of, um, um, how can I say it? I'm able to get into a lot of databases and, and get what we need in terms of, you know, training and development. Can you see me? Something just happened with my I screen. I think, uh, are, Al, are you gonna share it? Are you gonna share that uh, one? Sure. Yeah, this is your outline. Is this what you wanted me to share? Pull it up? I so don't I see. see it Yeah, I think you have to select that window here. Or do you have it open up in Word? Yeah, I do have it open in Word, did it not? Did it didn't share. Didn't share yet. But, but speaking to that, Joanna, I know we want to make sure that we are, um, like you're saying, we want to give like, 
you know, a real training. You know, we right. want to make sure we're yeah. not doing any damage. You know, none of uh, you're the only expert in this, you know, but we, if we do offer like training to, um, you know, people that work for the village and all that, it really has to be a, um, an actual, you know, authorized training by whoever, you know. So, okay. Thank you for sharing that, Al. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Al. Yeah, sure. Um, so again, uh, you know, so basically just in terms of the content, uh, yeah. Oh, I wish I could. Okay. That's all right. Cause I have it here with me. All right. So basically, you know, these are the things that I, you know, that I thought about, you know, as I was, um, putting together the outline that, you know, that the instructional tools would really, really be something positive, a positive tool, you know, that would really focus on the equal treatment of our residents in the community. Right. So, you know, um, pretty much that. Uh, I know Yanina just sent the email that, she, you know, she talked about this um, systemic racism, you know. Um, so, you know, we have to make sure that, you know, if we decide collectively in the vision, you know, that that those points are, are definitely um, key and that people, you know, the whole my at least again, but this is not about me, it's a collaborative approach. You know, my thinking at this point is that we're doing um, activities and things that are going to make people feel included, involved, that, you know, even having a, a space for people to be able to really share. You know, now, Al, you just mentioned, you just said, you know, if we go before, uh, you know, employees and things like that, What's nice about being a consultant sometimes is when you're talking to groups or, or teams, when they don't know you, they're more open to, to opening up. You know what I mean? Whereas if somebody from HR department comes in and does training, uh, they may not feel the, you know, as open to share a concern or share you know, an incident or something that they don't feel comfortable about for fear of backlash. But when you have someone on the outside looking in and coming in, sometimes that gives a, um, how can I say it? It gives an environment for more freedom. So, you know, my hope is that even if we're gonna do any kind of implementation for employees, that the people will, the individuals will feel open to share because this is how we get to healing and this is how we get to healthy work environments, work healthy communities, um, giving, the giving people the ability to be open about their thoughts and their feelings. Yep. And this reminds me of a question I had at the first meeting was, is there any way to get the actual demographics of the village? Because we're talking about, you know, making sure that people feel um, included and, and, and all that. And, you know, I, I, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that I think that the whites feel included, you know, I, I, don't, I don't, but it's like, but how are they feeling? Are they feeling comfortable with the non-whites in the village? And how many are there? And are the non-whites feeling comfortable? That, that's, you know, would be my question. And I, I really, I have, I don't, I know there's about 5,500 residents, right, of the village. What, what is our percentage of, um, I don't, I think it wasn't broken up for Williamsville. It was only broken up like for Amherst, but when you look it up, did, did we ever figure out what it was? The, the last one that I looked at, at the first um, gathering we had, um, it was 85 to 90% I think Caucasian, and then the rest was was a, a breakdown of I think it broke down Latino um, and African American, and there were some other small subcultures as well, but those but that was it. You're right. It was like ninety around ninety percent from my recollection. So but, when we want to let people have a sense of belonging. You know, I, I don't I don't want to sound rude, but like I, I think the whites do feel like they belong. So well, how we can't do we speak talk? though. We can't speak for people though, because just because someone is white doesn't necessarily mean that they feel that they they you know. But wouldn't not, it be? I don't I don't know if I agree with that. Just because of someone's ethnic, um, you know, their nationality or whatever, that may not necessarily mean that they feel 
uh, you know, uh, but if they don't, it's not, but if they don't feel belonging, it's not because of race. How do we know if, that? Well, I, I guess I, I guess I just don't understand how it would be then. Like if they're, if they don't feel like they belong and they don't feel comfortable, I think it's for other reasons, which could very well be, you know, real, but it's not what the diversity committee is about. I just spoke to someone from Sla. Oh gosh, and I should be able to pronounce this. People that speak Slavic. What? What? Where do they come from? The Ukraine. Okay. Uh, he's from the Ukraine. Okay. okay. And, and I guess I don't mean I don't mean um I, you know anybody a foreign. But, and, and, and I'm not trying to to debate either, but I'm yeah. trying to make a point. I spoke to someone from the Ukraine a couple of weeks ago that is actually lives by my business in Williamsville. And I was telling him, hey, you know, because I thought he's, you know, from the Ukraine and everything, that would be a great perspective. I've been trying to invite a lot of professional people uh, to, to join in that reside in, in Williamsville because I know we're looking for more, you know, uh, collaboration and things like that. And we we went there and we you know we got into the conversation and and you know he did not feel the you know for maybe the, the accent or his language or whatever just to make it general you know he did not feel what you're describing so that's why you know that could be open for interpretation but again i um, agree with that hmm? yeah I, I agree. I was, I, I guess I was forgetting about, you know, a European foreign born person. I guess I was thinking like, you're just your, you know, nationality, white American, they feel comfortable here. I would include your friend as someone that um, maybe they're not a racial minority, but they're a, a nationality, you know, a nationalistic minority here. I would include them as someone we would want to feel that might not feel like they belong. But so, and my question is that how do we, how do we target and find, you know, this five to 10%, you know, or what you said it was 85 to 90. So, you know, 10, 10 to 15% of people that are not, you know, um, white Americans. Or are we not about that? Or are we just putting it out there? And hopefully it gets to the right people. Like I'm thinking in terms of like, I was, I was thinking of like a welcome brochure. My big thing is that I want people to know that this little village is not as elite and white and, and, and you know, with no minorities as a lot of people that don't live in the village think, you know, they, they really think it's all rich white people here. Well, you know? the people that don't live in the village, that's not our demographic right now anyway, who we're talking to. We're, our concern is for those that do reside in the village. And again, I'm not an expert or a know-it-all, but I feel that pretty much we cannot assume what anybody feels at any time, especially right now where our cli the climate of our nation and where we're at right now, especially. So I'm encouraged that we pro it might be just, I guess, safer. And I don't even know if that's the correct term. I'm very tired. I don't like these 7.30 meetings because, oh my God, by this time, all day long. I, I agree. But I anyway, agree. Um, you know, I think in terms of the vision that, you know, again, under the domain of cultural diversity awareness, that it just should be an inclusive, uh, you know, uh, an inclusive, uh, I guess, um, tasks that we're in that we just put it out there for everyone because you'd be surprised man you know it's kind of like when you buy something you think you you didn't like it and then come to find out everyone else liked it and you're like oh my god I never thought anybody would like that you know what I mean it's kind of like the same thing as hey, that's, a buyer. A good, uh, that's a good option for our name as well because I remember the last meeting we were thinking do we what is our name even are we just going to be diversity diversity inclusion what is the name of this committee I think the cultural diversity awareness committee is great. Although I think we, had we decided if we were also going to be inclusive of, you know, I think I, I said what my thoughts were about, um, you could be diversity and, and inclusion. I was thinking this committee was going to be more race and cultural, but I think there was an, some people were, were saying that it also could be inclusion of, you know, intellectual or, or physical disabilities. 
um, did we decide really where we're? Well, that's all really? under that's that's all under cultural diversity. All of it. everything that you just really? mentioned: the weight, obesity, um, so physical and intellectual disabilities are under. Um, cultural those disability. are all okay. under. Well, you know, it gets in. There's layers. There's layers. But when we when we're talking about particularly in the workplace, because I know in workplace diversity and things like that, and and I have literature that. I really wish we could meet in person too sometimes, but I know right now we can't. That way I could really, you know, but as time goes, hopefully we'll really be able to dig deep. Um, but mm -hmm. I know just in terms of training and development, definitely those layers come into play. Um, you know, uh, transgender, um, obesity. Um, what else right now? Uh, the, uh, um, dis, you know, dis disability. So many different layers, all under that umbrella. Mm -hmm. And if we want to have a healthy community, we're going to have to factor in is not even somebody could feel a certain way just because of their weight or something. You know what I mean, Nick? Or their gray hair. <laughs> mm -hmm. Or their gray hair. Or their gray <laughs> hair. They don't forget to age. Oh, that's another thing. We've got a lot of seniors in the community. Oh, yeah. You know, are they, you know, then you have people, you know, yeah, good point. Uh, age diversity. All right, I have to head out and I have to pick up my daughter for um, from soccer, but then I'm going to try to hop back on. Okay. Yeah. All right. So okay. we will see. Ya. Thanks. All right. Bye. 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 Um, it's so a then, heavy um, duty, you know, diversity is heavy. It's not, you know, it's, it's heavy. It's heavy. Duty. It's very heavy. And it's, it's much more inclusive than I know I was thinking, um, when starting this. And I know that, <laughs> you know, I, I can't, I guess what makes me nervous about including that much is I can't speak to a lot of it. You know what I mean? Um, and, and as, um, how do we speak to all of those things? Like, who has you know i can tell you thought. that's easy to answer that's an easy answer michelle Very okay easy you know how we speak to it by first of all before we try to launch anything we we do our own process you know what i mean between <laughs> us <laughs> like i said i got plenty of literature here you know and, and can get my hands on on the most current data in the world okay a asap that's how we learn. You kind of learn and go. You just jump in, you know, like in the Navy. If you can't swim, they throw you in the water in the Navy, okay? You just I like jump my dad. in. Yeah. And you'll get it. We're not going to let you drown. That's how you get it, right? Just like anything else in this life, any new venture or domain, you got to just do the work. But you have to be a little committed because right now with diversity and all, you know, the way the world is changing every two seconds, I mean, you don't yeah. know what's happening next. Because if we have these events and we have, you know, when we can have in-person events or we have a table at the farmer's market or something, and we are supposed to be like, I don't know the right, you know, I know since I work for People Inc., there's like, there's certain words you don't, like right now we only say older adults. We never say senior citizen anymore. That's a banished word, just like the R word is for intellectual disabilities. You know, like I know that because, you know, of the place I work for, but, um, you know, I, I guess I just feel like I wouldn't want to, I don't want to be like, you know, posing as some expert on diversity when I'm not. I know, cult, you know, me as a multiracial person, that's what I could speak to. And that's where I want to make sure that people of different actual racial differences feel comfortable in Williamsville. But should we make sure that we have people that could speak to all kinds of, um, yeah. you know, diversities on our, in our, on our committee? We've got all we need. Everything that you have, Michelle, is within you. You've got everything. You've got all the tools inside of you to do this. You don't need anything else. Work with what okay. you have. You've yeah, got I mean, it. I just don't want to be doing anything like outright wrong. Well, <laughs> you know you're not what I mean? going, like, that's not going <laughs> to happen. Don't even, that's not even, <laughs> yeah. you know, everything that you need, you already have. Right, Nick? Right, um, Al? We've mm -hmm. already, you already got it. Yeah, However, However, the things that we're still yet learning, we will not 
you know, present something that we're unaware of. We've got plenty, of, we've got pl plenty of tools to work with. And it's not as deep as I hope I'm not making it seem. It's yeah, not really like, that I'm, deep. <laughs> it's not. Of, of not being sensitive, like let's say transgender or something like that, like they're doing the, my pronoun, pronouns are, you know, like, I don't know mm -hmm. if, if I'm as sensitive to that. My son has a lot of friends that are doing that now. Uh -huh. And so he actually said, he has a friend, this is kind of funny, very funny, but he has a mm -hmm. friend that's a girl and she's, she's going to um, identify as a demi girl now. So he said, well, I'm going to identify as a demigod. My pronouns are thine and thou. And you know, it's like, I put that on Facebook as well. But, you know, that wasn't very sensitive. Well, we <laughs> want to stay in a theoretical context for now, right now, because a lot of different things are trending. I can get everything that we need. I did something for Kaleida uh, a while. It was a while ago um, um, on that in that domain, okay, or in that uh, topic or subject or whatever we want to call it. Um, and, but whatever we present, it won't be hearsay, you know, we're not going to come from that standpoint, we'll be able to stand, we'll be able to come with, um, um, we'll be able to cite or source information that is credential, that's not just, you know, okay. a Facebook post or something we went on the okay. internet to get because, you know, we are, at least I'm an academic. So, you know, I'm not even gonna present anything except this source. Okay, and that's okay. good. So we, we can get speakers, you know, it'll be a learning experience for myself and as well when we say we present something that I don't know a lot about. But and don't like think, said, I don't want us to think that it's getting ready to be, you know, because it is a lot of fun, but you're right, Michelle, and what you're saying, your concerns are valid and true. It, it is, you have to be mindful of what's happening, especially as a leader in, in, in presenting this new process that we're trying to bring to Williamsville. Absolutely. Because yeah. you're going to have the uh, citizens of Williamsville that are already doing this work. They're already PhDs that are teaching, uh, you know, at, at the master's level in, in uh, mm -hmm. cultural and diversity and women's studies and things like that. Yeah. So don't worry. We, we're, we will be able to give solid information, but at the same time, I'm hoping that our vision, and I don't want to talk too much, but that it will be collaborative if other people in the community want to come in and share or whatever, but still stay, it, not, not get too, um, I guess, sidetracked or, or whatever. You know how you can get too much and then all of a sudden you get nowhere, but still keep a clear vision and a clear goal. What do you guys think? Well, yeah, I was going to say. Nick and Al? Yeah, I was going to say, you know, you know for Michelle, you know, I don't think we're touting this as a professional group that that we have <clears throat> absolutely professional knowledge on any one particular item of this. You know, I think that I think you, if we push it out, you know, we have Survey Monkey. I think we should use our our tools we have at Village Hall, and we we put together a survey of the community and have them tell us, you know, the question you're asking. You know, what is your what is your demo? What is who are you? What are you? And do you feel comfortable? And what can your community do to make you feel more comfortable? Or whatever that questionnaire becomes, right? Mm -hmm. And does that lead, you know, your path of like what's the most important, you know, based on that survey of whatever the greatest thing that people don't feel comfortable, then should we go in that direction, make that our focus, right? From a community standpoint. Yeah. We, we know we need to okay. we, we know we need to look at, you know, we want to do something for village hall staff. So we know that that's a goal we want to do. But secondarily, for community-wise, I think we should think of a, a poll to see to to poll everybody to see where are our needs, and then make that our top priority. And then, and I think to Joanna's point is that we're going to have people who run across us and hear about it, and they're like, "Hey, you know what? I'd love to help and be a part of this. I've done education on this particular section of what I think fits in your in your goals and vision." And you say, yes, come on in, you're welcome, let's do this, right? That's the way I kind of see it. And mm -hmm. I think that's kind of what, John, you're saying too. I think that's a great idea. I know we had talked about a survey monkey before and um, uh, maybe we can even, you know, maybe finish this out, Joanna's um, 
vision here. And from that, um, we can find some of the, you know, just have a list of questions ready tonight that I can give to Keaton as soon as possible. Sure. Because then that can, that will then direct, like you were saying, what our next, because I know the next part of this meeting, we were going to, I wanted us to at least decide on one goal we were going to set tonight to actually do of the things we talked about before. But maybe instead of deciding what's the next thing we do now, the next thing should be a survey. And that survey will then be able to indicate to us what our next move should be. I like that, Michelle. And I think we should get an intern. I think if we can work with the village, we should get an intern because I think an intern would help us, you know, because we're all busy and we got a lot of stuff going on. I'm telling you, this stuff can get to be, I mean, especially when you're talking about, you know, what we're talking about doing. If we could get an intern from one of the colleges and universities. Yeah, we've gotten some before, so we, that should not be an issue. Yeah, if we can get um, an intern, they can really help gather the data that we need to put things together. For and like, after, like, so I think the survey is a great idea. So I can get the, we can think of questions. We can give the questions to Keaton. He can easily do a survey monkey. He's got the database already, but to then get some kind of metrics from the survey, an intern can do that. Okay. Well, here's the thing though, when you're talking about the questions that we're asking, we have to make sure that we've gathered some data before we can ask the questions in my opinion. Now, I'm not a know-it-all and I don't, you know, I don't know, but I'm thinking, in order to ask a question, we have to have a little bit of data first before we can even ask the question. So we have, we could possibly ask ourselves, what kind of data do we have to even work with? Maybe we already have that data first before we can, you know, go into the process of questioning. What kind of questions and how will they relate to the mission and the vision? We got to have a real clear plan of that. What do you think, guys? Well, I mean, I know there's an existing database that has been emailed to before. You know, we've oh. there's even been other survey monkeys sent before. And okay. it's just of the res it's just of the residents. Um was that the most recent one, um, Al, for the park? For the the, the one that went out um for the park services? It was yeah, a couple was. years ago now. Yeah. Yeah, okay. there was more, there was even a, I think a more recent one. So I can see what, um, what data we have from uh, Keaton, because he would have that. Yeah. Um, we just want as many residents as possible. And, and the, I, I jotted some of the things down. I mean, we were saying like, you know, um, we would let them know that this is a cultural diversity awareness survey that already is going to let them know we're going to ask some questions about your nationality. So right. maybe like, you know, um, what race do you identify with? What Why don't we do this? Why don't we, if we're going to gather, ask those kind of questions, why don't we get an existing questionnaire that's already out there, something that's sourced? Because I know the dynamics of people. Would we, would we be open to having some kind of questionnaire in, in the, under the umbrella of cultural diversity that we can actually use as a tool and let the people know, here's our source. This is where it came. This is what we're using. Sure. We I think that would give more credibility, more validity to this rather than just, oh, we just, you know, what, what do you think? Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, for sure. I think so. What do you think, Al? Yeah, there's no need to reinvent the wheel, right? Sure. Yeah. Right. yeah. So if, you, if, we we, would... if we've got an existing questionnaire, or we know of one, then mm -hmm. we, yeah, I agree we should use that questionnaire, even if we kind of import it over into SurveyMonkey so it can collect the data for us. That's what mm -hmm. it's there for. And then we can populate the data. And then yeah. as long as there's some kind of tee up text to let mm -hmm. people know, you know, because I know I, if I certainly got a questionnaire and it just with no explanation saying, what race do you identify with, blah, 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 I'd be a little taken aback. But if the tee up text already says, if the TF text already says the village of Williamsville is looking to become more culturally aware and to, you know, whatever to, uh, you know, promote inclusion among its residents, if it has a really nice, you know, bit of TF text like that, I think people would be more apt to take the survey. So, so, so that actually sounds like our first order of business for sure. 
Mona, do you have a, a list of, of surveys? Do you have access to some surveys that have already been done? Yes, but I we need current stuff because the world is changing so quick. Yeah. Things are moving so quick. What I will do tomorrow, tomorrow while I'm at my shop or my studio, um, let me go in, into some databases and see what I can come across, okay? okay. I can research some as well. Mm -hmm. I can mm -hmm. see if Survey Monkey has any any you know any template for for something, or but I, I can just do some general research as well. We could both work on that, see what we come up with. Mm -hmm. That'd be good, and and I think we should really try to have one that's really you know maybe from one of the universities or something that would really not be a hearsay type thing because you know in the community you have people that are experts in our community, and you know when you're dealing with other experts, you gotta come you know. Make sure that we're all on the same page, in my opinion. That's just my opinion speaking right now. Yeah. No, you're right. It, it, it'll take me, it helps to just, it makes it more, you know, it is for the, uh, makes it more valid for validity. I know I am that way. What do you, Nick, you haven't said much. What are your thoughts now? You you come across everybody. If anybody should know about diversity in, in, in this process. Yeah, I think it's, you. You know, it's I think uh, we're on the right track. I think, um, I think it's great for the, for the people in Williamsville. Um, it'd be great to be able to get the business community on board and maybe, um, the Village of Waynesville uh, Business Association. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that would be a good step. Um, you know, maybe if businesses think that, you know, we can hold an event and it'll attract people to their businesses. I think, um, you know, that's that's an inclusive way of, of kind of bringing everybody together. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I sit on the, I also sit on the board of directors for the WBA. So yeah. I'd like to bring them into the loop now that we've got this formed. Trey Meiser, um, he's also um, on the WBA as well. So um, he can certainly speak to this as well. Um, yeah. And kind of, I agree, the business community also needs to be involved in this. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, mm -hmm. so they're, they're, they're a big they're, part of Waynesville. Absolutely. <laughs> And so Nick, maybe you should introduce yourself to us. I, I mm -hmm. was thinking we didn't need to introduce ourselves to you, but I actually, if you want to tell a little bit about yourself. Yeah, um, I've, uh, I've, I've, my company was on the corner of Maine and Garrison for many years. Um, I purchased that building. Um, I own uh, a company called VIP Tix. Oh, I know that one. It's a salon <laughs> now or something or? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, we sold it maybe five years ago. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I've been doing. Uh, I've I uh, used to run the box office at the Odd for many years, mm. and then started my own ticket company um, twenty seven years ago. So we've been doing. We've been buying and helping clients buy and sell sports concerts and theater tickets. Um, we do it all over the world. Um, and right now, because of COVID, we, we don't have much going on. Um, so I took a uh, position with uh, Piconi Construction out in Clarence, and I'm selling construction for them while um, I wait for my business to come back. Mm. So I have uh, three boys, I'm married, um, and uh, I coach soccer. So I, I'm... Uh, and I'm taking classes at the University of Buffalo. I'm pursuing a master's in uh, real estate development. So that's what I do. And that's who I am. <laughs> Great. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Joanna. Yeah. Okay, so um, I'm gonna go into, uh, let's see. I think the rest of, Oh, wait, is that your, so I only have. Can you scroll down some more on the outline? Yeah, I, yeah yes, I, oh, well, yeah. I'm gonna do a, oh, okay, I see what I did wrong. Yeah, um, and then even the agenda, so let's see. I'm gonna, I can put the agenda up to you on the screen. 
and the, the rest of the vision kind of coincides with, you know, the rest of the agenda really where I was talking about, you know, um, what is our goal and how do we do it? And it's pretty much, you know, yeah. So the, sen the sensitivity training we were pretty much we're talking about already, um, where once we get this survey back and really know where we stand, mm -hmm. we, we can ask, one of the questions could even be, you know, would you be comfortable attending a, you know, cultural sensitivity training? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and if it's zero, <laughs> you know. I mean, it can, wow, route, this so. is great. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah. So I, I think, yeah, it's kind of, kind of, you know, it, 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 I think, Joanna, like you, yours was, you know, much deeper dive into like my three um, bullets there, facilitating a welcoming atmosphere, educating the villagers, um, but how do we do it? Um, so I, I think the survey is a great idea. Mm -hmm. Um, and then from there, um, so we may, when we find these, these survey templates, you know, cultural diversity awareness, you know, survey templates, we'll be able to kind of tweak it, you know, maybe add some other questions um, to find out what we want to find out as well. I, I like the community input too, because we have a lot, like I said, a lot of my professors, the people that taught me and stuff, they reside in Williamsville. You have some, have, you have some renowned leaders in Williamsville, I'm telling you. Yeah. And I don't know why they just decided to move to Williamsville, but I mean, I'm talking about experts in the world, world-class leaders right in Williamsville. Hmm. That, it'd, be to, uh, it'd be great to, it'd be great to ask them what they think about. That's right. Absolutely. Yeah. I got my mind. I know I'm thinking about uh, you know, two right actually, now that I know of. And they live in the community. So it'd be mm -hmm. great to hear their thoughts about the diversity in the village. You know, maybe um, Keaton can even do a new um, list purchase if, if that's in our budget at all, because maybe we don't, you know, if the last uh, survey went out a few years ago, there's so many more people that have moved into the area. And, you know, there's companies that sell, you know, that sell lists. And so we can be, be sure to get, um, you know, as many emails as we can for people in, in this one square mile. Mm -hmm. I love the businesses. I love how we're, you know, bringing the business uh, community in. Very, very, very important. Right. Well, that's why I thought of you. You were the first business person that I, I did. I tripped on you. I, I know I knew you from the market, but I, I wanted to invite somebody from our business community, and I didn't realize you had all the background that you had. So <laughs> I'm really excited. Um, yeah. But. It's, uh, so I'll try to find out how many we have in our database now, as far as okay. our email database. Okay. Um, and then, um, so regarding budget, because we we'll we'll go into budget meetings in the next couple months. We actually just got our packets today. So as a committee, um, we should probably think about you know the budget would start in June. So. That doesn't mean that there may not be money for us to do small things now, but we should think about a budget. Um, if if we if we want to bring in a speaker mm -hmm. for next budget year, what do we think the cost of that would be? So, are there any costs that we think we need to be thinking about? So, if you want to get me those, say over the next couple of weeks, um, mm -hmm. Joanna, you may have a better idea of of that, um, and then that way we can budget for that for next fiscal year. That would be so nice. I was a part of the National Speakers Bureau at one time. I probably should renew my membership. <laughs> um, we have so many great people right here. Like I said, we don't have to really, I mean, I know we need money to function and of course, but so much is right here in our own backyard to just utilize it. And we're very blessed to have that, I think, you know, yeah. so many great people. And I agree. I, I do. You know, I always encourage everybody to be involved. But I mean, like for instance, like for your sake, you know, if you wanted to do the training for us internally, you know, I mean, I think I would look at you as a contractor, which would not be part of this budget. That would be more in our office budget, which would not be part of this committee budget. But for each of our committees, 
they get a, a budget and depending on what they're doing, right? Mm -hmm. you know, like trees budget is big, you know, that's a tree board. So they get a lot more money because it mm -hmm. obviously takes more money to plant trees, trim trees and all that. Parks is another uh, bucket. So, um, so we can have a bucket of money just like Michelle knows how it works with Youth and Rec. You know, we get so much money mm -hmm. per event. Mm -hmm. So the same thing here. So if we said, you know, should we ask for $500 our first year or $1,000 to do, if we needed to pay a speaker $200 to come speak at the meeting house on mm -hmm. a given topic, then at least we have that. Mm -hmm. um, we don't use it, you know, we, carry, we can have it carry over to the next year. Mm -hmm. so, so that's something we can think about too in the, up, you know, the upcoming weeks. Mm -hmm. We have a lot to look forward to. Yeah, we do. So, and okay. Right. Well, I was also I, I was just looking through my list to make sure I was gonna, I had everything down for the minutes. But um, we I had tossed around earlier if we want what did we wanted the name to be. We talked about oh yeah. Maybe we can settle on that tonight. Do we yeah. want to stay with diversity, diversity inclusion, cultural diversity awareness? Um, I, I Nick, tell I, us. <laughs> Nick, which one should we go with? <laughs> I don't know. Um, I have to give it some thought. Um, and my, I just, okay. Oh, my opinion is I don't think it should be some scary big word. Mm -hmm. I think. Um, mm -hmm. Cause that kind of just sets people off a little bit. Like I'm going to get scolded. <laughs> you know, um, it should be something that kind of just brings everybody together more so than you know thinking that you know here we go another diversity training it's it seems right. like um we're just getting bombarded with it mm -hmm. everywhere but you know you want people to, to be included um but you don't want it to give it a scary name because i think that just kind of turns people off too why don't we call it the block club <laughs> <laughs> the <Right>? block club <laughs> remember the good old-fashioned block club yeah <laughs> the block club committee who's on the block club who's going uh, for block like club training group or i don't know yeah there are a, there's a list of banished words this year um mm -hmm. I, we had a marketing uh, meeting at my job and it's ridiculous what the banished words are because you still need to use them social distancing unprecedented mm -hmm abundance of caution these are words that nobody wants to hear anymore <laughs> I, I, do, I, I do agree that diversity does start making you think oh great you know <laughs> so, so maybe maybe we are not the diversity you know maybe it's another name how about just the awareness committee or, you know? or what happened to the unity in the community committee <laughs> <laughs> right i mean i like that Hi, honey Hi, Rachel. Rick Wells, you made it back. Uh, uh. You know, the one I just came, came to mind, like what, what Nick was saying, to kind of make it light and conversational. What if it was the Culture Conversation Committee? Like, oh, like oh, what about good. the Culture Club? Hey, let's just go straight yeah, to Culture yeah. Club. <laughs> culture Conversation Committee, CCC. <laughs> See, yeah, I like that. See, I will rock dreads and a hat, no no yeah. problem. Uh -huh, I like it. <laughs> culture. <laughs> Say that again, Al. Could you repeat that one more time? Culture Conversation Committee. Or okay. Culture Conversations Committee. Yeah. yeah. I like that. Cu cultural Conversations? Yeah, committee. Yeah. Or was it culture and conversations? You're you're really muffled to me for some reason. Yeah, I think it's my. I've got a new computer oh. on the way. It's oh, it, that's it, it's slow and breaks up. It's it's pretty bad. Okay. Um, yeah, I was throwing out the idea of the culmination of starting conversations, right? And so our our goal is conversations around culture, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Our vision and our mission will explain what we're about. But I think you're right. Everything's in a name. It's like a marketing. It's a brand. Mm -hmm. People saying, "I want to be part of the conversation." It does feel a little more welcoming, and mm -hmm. not so sterile, right? I, I love it. Mm -hmm. So, so the name could be whatever this group wants it to be. It's a democracy. So, if you like it, go with it. If you don't, it doesn't hurt my feelings. It was. I like the I like the conversation part of it because I think it just it just kind of opens the door as opposed to. Um, 
reluctant, reluctantly walking in a door, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, we as a, as a village board, when I first came on, what we did was we changed. If you've been in Village Hall before, there's the dais up there, the wood portion where the judge sits and where we as board members sit. And we, we got rid of that. We actually moved down front and we sat in chairs because we wanted to have a conversation and not sitting up above the audience, a big part of the audience and part of the conversation. So that's kind of, we've moved back up top because of space and COVID. And even before that, you know, there was some contested things and people were getting a little angry with, you know, development going on. So we felt more comfortable back there because some the meetings got heated. But it brings me back to that point of having a conversation rather than, you know, I'm teaching you or whatever. We, you know, mm. not that we're not going to have speakers, but you, you know what I mean? Let's have a conversation about it. Yeah, I love it. So cultural, the cultural conversations committee. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's what I threw out. Anybody okay. else? Yeah. I mean, is it too long? I'm trying, and then... And I think it's got to be because I'm thinking, you know, there was an arts and culture. Arts and culture was not about cultural things. It was not any kind of diversity at right. all. So then this would really need to be cultural, um, cultural, cultural conversations. Yeah. Do we need a vote on it or what does everybody think? I love and it. And then do I, I need to tell Keaton that and he, he has to change all that on the web. Does it need to run by the board or anything again? No, not necessarily. Okay. 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 All righty. Okay, so that's one thing we have accomplished. We have our right. our vision, <laughs> our mission, and our name. Three things. Yeah. Okay. Um, and yeah, I think um, you know, Joanna and I are just tasked with looking up some. Um, existing um, questionnaires that will fit our our needs. Um, Al, you're going to find out just how many um, emails Keaton has in the, the database. Yep. And if if it seems like it's really, la you know, not very close to the 5,500, maybe we can do a list purchase. It be a couple hundred dollars. Okay. Can we have an advance on our <laughs> on our budget? Yeah, we, and we, we may already have that like an office budget anyway. Okay. Depending on what we, what we find and what the cost of things are. Okay. Um, and then we're um, going to just, oh, I think you missed this part, Kelly, where we're in any expenses we think we think we may have, like a speaker um, for me, this buying this, you know, email list, like Al just wants to know what our, what we're thinking our, our expenses might possibly be since budget conversations are starting to happen and okay. amongst the board. Yeah. You know, especially if we, when it comes to doing, you know, we actually did do an arts and culture event in October. We did one, we did it, you know, in person and mass and everything. And, um, you know, we, we had to get to some, some supplies and things. So um, I know Kelly, at the first meeting you had bought up, you know, how we do need to include children's activities. We can't yes. get the children in this. So let's keep that in mind for expenses we may need. Yeah, and that was a really successful event because people needed something to do they and did. it was freezing, but every single pumpkin making kit we made every single um, it went trick um, trick or treat bag, um, you know, decor set that Amy did everything was gone every gourd that we got every pumpkin gone like there was it really was successful. Yeah, was so, really successful. Yeah, and that, yeah. And, I mean, even like budget. You know, we may want to get a table skirt if we're going to table at the farmer's market. Mm -hmm. So it's a little cost like that, you know, that we may want to look and see, mm -hmm. do, we, do we want to purchase a table skirt with our name on it and the village logo? Um, so that way, if we table through the farmer's market, um, then we had those things. So it's little things like that. Yeah. And when do you want all of the, when do you want a list of expenses from us? Bye. We will have our first meeting in the later part of February, early March. Hmm. And then okay. it'll be finalized, I think, by the end of March, typically, because then we have to put it out for the public viewing by April, and then we vote on it, I think, in late April, or early May. Okay. So, so why don't we say, like, you know, by, you know, a couple of weeks, you know, early February, just get that over to me, and, uh, you know, just email it to me, then I'll make a nice Word doc list for, for Al. 
Thanks. Yep. Okay. And I think we covered a lot, a lot of, you know, pretty much everything where, I mean, maybe not so much like the, how do we do this part? Um, because so far we've now decided we need to do the survey first to find out, you know, really what what we are going to do. I do know the farmer's market table and children activities. That's something that we'll definitely do um, when, when that starts up again. And then, oh yeah, the other thing is I still have to call Forest Elementary to get um, in details on the sign they have that's translated into all kinds of different languages. I think okay. that, that, that would be nice. I don't know if that could be our first year. I will get the price on that. If it isn't too crazy expensive, I will um, include that in the list as well. Sure, yeah, let's put it on the budget. It, it may everything may not make it for the first year, but right. I would say let's do that and we can always keep it on a wish list, you know, okay. in the next fiscal year if it doesn't make it the first year. Okay. Right. Okay. And does um, anybody have any new business that they want to bring up in regard to this committee? Okay. All right. I would say if everyone, you know, if no one else has anything to discuss. I was going to say, you know, I, I know that Joanna said that, you know, she was just getting off work and everything. So we're not necessarily structured to meeting at the same time. It's nice, especially when the public can come by, they can count on when they, when we go back to in-person. But if we wanna meet even on a Saturday, it's say 2 p.m. at Village Hall, if we wanna meet it, it's a smaller group, we can do that. We just have to notify that Village Hall, you know, we would be there. So, mm -hmm. um, so and we, we have my business too though, remember? I oh, We have my studio too, right? Where everyone we, can could, get we can meet there too, as long as we, we just have to notify so it's mm -hmm. in public knowledge that because it's an official, you know, uh, meeting of a, a village committee, um, we just have to notify your address and people will come there if they mm -hmm. want. To. So, okay. yeah, we can meet wherever we want as long as we notice it. So, but if you, if, as a group, if you just want to get together and have coffee, there, that's not it. But, you know, like for our official meetings with the minutes and everything, um, then, then we either video it because of COVID now, are we meeting in person and we just notify it the date and time and place? That's right, because we don't have, we haven't, <clears throat> the village doesn't have us down as a regular time and day yet. Right, and, and some do meet as a regular time and day, um, and, and that's fine. Some do ad hoc um, or as needed, you know, like if you look at some of the boards, if there's nothing on their docket, they don't meet, right? Some meet quarterly, some do we meet monthly. So it's really up to the committee to set that and the committee can change it. Okay, okay. Um, well, what does everybody think? You know, I think with um, with as slow as everything is right now, um, you know, maybe we want to, well, I mean, I would like to get this um, survey off the ground, but I don't know if that needs to be another meeting, you know, mm -hmm. that could be, Juwan and I and I talking and comparing what lever lists we've gotten and then, you know, getting the questions um, emailed out to everybody, see if they agree and then get the email questions to Keaton. So I don't think we need a meeting to get that off the ground. So does everyone think we need one in a month or do, do we want to go six weeks? You well, know, and maybe, then- Maybe mid-February mid after we kind of, um, you guys kind of pass around to the other members. Um, your list, um, the the questionnaire. Okay. You can see what people think of the questionnaire. I can also have Keaton look and see. Maybe there's even tools that we have through some of our associations as a government. There may be questionnaires that are there as well. So we can maybe get copies of that, and then I can have them circulate that for you guys. And then we can pick a questionnaire as a group, or you guys can pick a questionnaire as a group. Mm -hmm. and just let him know if you can run it. Yeah. Yeah. I think we can do that all through email. So. Yeah. Um, Mid-February puts us, you know, around, let's see, what is today? Today is the 7th. We could be what about the 12th? Time. Oh, not, not the 12th. Maybe like the, the 11th or the 18th of February. Well, I don't have anything going on for Valentine's, so it doesn't really matter <laughs> to me, okay? <laughs> and, and I, um, do we, do we even want to stick to a Thursday? I mean, um, I don't really care what a Thursday to be honest. If we could do something more like a Monday or a Tuesday is just better for me because in my business, Thursdays, Fridays, or Saturdays, those are really like busy for me. So okay. thanks for bringing that up. I was going to mention for me, 
even a Sunday evenings work well. Monday, well, Sunday, I don't know. Sometimes I'm asleep. Monday, Tuesdays, those are my more chill days when, you know, I'm not, I'm at my best around 7.30 yeah. in the evening. <laughs> right, but do we, I think this is, I think this is too late. I'd rather not do it this late, 7.30 mm -hmm. is late. Yeah. Um, Even like quick, you know, give people time to grab a quick bite to eat, unless yeah. your shop is still open that time, Donna. I can work. I can still meet with you guys from the shop, even. But the so you're. I, I think we all agree. Seven thirty is a bit late. Yeah. How do people feel about six? I don't know. I'm not. That could be close to like dinner and time for me, like maybe six thirty. Yeah. yeah. Um. Whenever. Okay. We'll make it work. I'm. I'm like the. You know. I'm the cook and the cleaner. So <laughs> that's like busy hour for me. Okay. So so six thirty. And why don't we do 6.30, February 15th, the day after Valentine. What day is that on? Is that still on a Thursday? Okay. Nope, that's a, that's a Monday. Monday. Oh, good, yeah. Good, excellent. Thank you. The cultural, cultural Conversations Committee will meet next, February 15th at 6.30 p.m. Perfect. Uh, perfect. Oh, it's President's Day. We can still do it, but just so that you are aware, it's President's Day. Oh, that's a holiday? Well, oh. uh, no, uh, uh, not on a holiday. <laughs> All right, so do we want to move it to the 16th? Uh, the follow What about the following Monday, a week after the 15th? Was that the 21st? So that's the 22nd. Is that too close to, like, you know, when you need to already have your budget or anything oh, on L? Yeah, the, 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 what you guys have to keep in mind is the second and fourth Monday, we have board meetings. Uh, uh, month. So the second, the fourth, the 22nd wouldn't work for me because I'll be in the board okay, meeting. Okay, yeah. uh, I'll keep it. I can keep it then on the 15th for me, and that's fine. Okay. Or, the, or, or the 16th. Yeah. That Tuesday. Doesn't matter. I don't know. What do you think, Kelly? I mean, the kids will be off. You and I might, who knows what you and I Stay might Stay off do. that whole week? With the kids, are right. they off the whole week? I think they is that the break. You know, I don't know. I could run and get my um. Yeah, because if that well, yeah. if that's the break, I could do it one day that week. I mean, you know what I mean? Because I'm sure I'm gonna try to do stuff with them, like skiing. But I would try to go earlier. Right. You know, sledding or tubing. Let me go or, look at my district calendar really quick. I'll be right back. Okay. And if we don't decide tonight, you can also email. We don't have to notice it this early. Oh, okay. Yeah. I think we just have to notice it 24, 48 hours. And, and it has to be on the website. Mm-hmm. Yes, that is the week that they are off. So um, why okay. don't we do it? What about Friday the twelfth? Well, no, I don't want to do it a Friday at six o'clock. Uh, yeah, nobody wants Friday. Um, yeah, I'm, I, yeah, maybe. I like Monday the holiday because yeah. we're probably off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll see if it if it has to change. I mean, may, Kelly, maybe we'll be doing it from a you know. From a ski lodge and Pelican Hill was where we. Well, why don't we just plan the meeting up at the ski lodge? You know? There we you go. Do. I'm so I'm bummed this, this year. I'm, I'm so. That, we have a there. You go. Right. We have bummed the lodge it. kind of closed this year. I'm really bummed about that because this Ooh. is the first year I've I've given. I, I'm not gonna. I feel like I'm too old to keep skiing, <laughs> so I'm oh, not gonna man. do it. So I thought it's just my knees. You know, my. Yeah, I, 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 yeah. I'm so mad that. The knees are what got me in my age, you know, but, um, you know, maybe I'll try to do something else. You know what I found in my knees that were bothering me? I had to give up gluten. Gluten bothered my knees when ah, I could gluten. Really? It was hurting, yep. Hmm. Oh. And it's very reproducible. As soon as I eat it, I feel it within a couple of days and then a couple of days hmm. later it goes away. I almost quit running because of it. Hmm. Oh, wow. So hmm. give it a shot if you want. Can always go back. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm already gluten free. I already don't. Oh, eat you gluten. are okay. No, mine is all hereditary. It's all the yeah. Bordens have bad knees. <laughs> That's okay. my my maiden name. <laughs> 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 okay. 
Well, um, yeah, let's shoot for then. And um, I, I will send out minutes um, probably in the next day or so. Okay. 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 Nice to meet you. Thank you. Thank you so for joining us, Nick. You're welcome. That's and uh, we hope you'll come back and, you know, your part. I'll come back. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> bye. Bye. Okay, bye, bye. Bye now. Thank Have you. Bye-bye. 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 Bye, Al. See you, Joanna. Hope you feel better. Mia, yeah, me too. I'm trying to figure out how to close this out. <laughs> yeah, no, let me get out of here. I'll see you later. <laughs> <laughs> see you. What's that? Okay. Yeah, no, I know. I know. Say bye. No, I know where the button is. It's not wanting to come up. It's just, it's my computer acting up. <laughs>